now that the free to play has come up and I told uh, my husband about it, he says, well, maybe I'll go ahead and, and see. Um, because I told him, well, if nothing else, get the, the freebie items for the, the anniversary and stuff, you know, while you can, because, you know, those will be one of a kind things. They're not going to bring them back. And he was like, oh, okay. So he's actually been playing a little bit. Uh, it's still not working right, is it? little quirkiness going on. Anyway, um, he's been working on level up. I think he's playing an engineer um, and finding that, you know, a lot of things have changed even from the little bit of time that uh, he played. He did do a little bit in the beta and uh, it started a little bit um, sometime after launch. Uh, he played around with it a little bit since my son wasn't using it and uh, he's already s spotted a lot of different changes like they've um, made the arc ship a little different and uh, even me when I was leveling my alt I saw the how they changed the when you go to the main city for the first time you get the little tour and before it was like little uh, holograms that you had to hunt down and now it's um, like taxi ride, or at least it was on Ilium's side. I assume it's probably the same, but they they now have just little uh, taxi tours that they uh, put you in, and you just ride along and listen and, and see what's there. And um, so I can definitely see that they've been you know making a lot of uh, changes to things, and it seems to be all for the better in in my point of view. Um, I know a lot of people still have a lot of complaints about a lot of things, um, but for the most part, I think everything has been moving in a positive direction. And hopefully this uh, transition from uh, subscription to free to play will just help bring more people, you know, their attention to the game and that will improve everybody's experience overall okay let's see lots and lots of plates man this is gonna be nuts This particular build is fairly boring because mostly you just laying in those pretty scales. You know, if it comes off like I have it, I can see it on my head, then it should look pretty nifty, but we'll see how it goes. Now, up until this point, I've just been kind of keeping it flat, but I'm going to have to start curving it a bit to better match the contour of the the body here. We're going to see how that goes. Let's 
plates are really shiny. I like that the light, you know, plays an active, um, has an active effect on the objects. With the light and the shade and, and everything. Probably the worst way to do this, but I'm just eyeballing everything. Just kind of slowly contouring the plates a little bit to make it match the, the shape of the, the hugel here that we're using as the body. Not going to be exact because I'm getting a little crooked here. But we want it close to kind of, kind of resemble the, sh the shape that we want. Not sure what's causing that fleshy effect. It's a little annoying, but we'll just go with it. That might be curved a little too much. Kinda kinda what we're looking for. Not only do I have to curve it, you know, the side, but also um, this way too. I need to like adjust this a bit. That falls along more with the the body shape. This is, you know, time consuming and. A lot of little detail. One false move and I'll probably mess it all up. That, that may or may work to my advantage, I don't know. I may be pulling my hair out by tomorrow. Something like that. I still think um, I'm probably going to have to these in even more. So. I think the, the overlap of the scales is better that way. I hate to do that, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is what it's going to require to make it look a little more It's just that that means that that's going to be gapped a little more and I'm not sure that's going to work okay. But we'll adjust that more as we get to the tail end because the tail will be the furthest back and then we'll have to lift it all up along the way. And we'll just see how far that brings us out. I fear it's going to be a pretty big gap. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. So, we'll continue with the scalies. I 
about right, so maybe it's better if I start at the back end. Back end here. Let's see. Like, have it like four. Whoops. Homer's talking. Be quiet. Maybe, uh, four pieces, two on each side to represent, like, the little part where the tail would, you know, be stuck in. have it as snug to the surface of um, the hoogle as possible so it's on the lowest point. something like that and then this one slightly above so that it's more overlap. That makes sense. You have to tilt it and get it as snug as possible but still have it overlap with the portion. I think you can see what I mean by it being like really out there. It's already starting to have a gap in it. The more I do that, the further out it's going to be. So I don't know if that's going to be a, an issue or not. Um, I'm not liking the look of how the scales are positioned there. I think they need that extra step of overlap there where it looks like they're underneath the next layer. And of course, I am just using the hoogle body as a guide. It's not like it's um, an actual part of the build. Just a, a way for me to kind of get the shape close or Something like that. Um, I'm 
not going to be perfect. It's just kind of um, getting as close to assimilation as uh, scales as I can make it, I guess. But see, I, I much prefer this kind of overlap than, than this. This looks too, um, it looks like more like a turtle shell than it does um, fish scales. I think this looks uh, much better. So yeah, I think we'll, um, we'll continue with that, that layering. Just a lot of eyeballing and and uh, tweaking here and there to get it just like I'm wanting. So there's no uh, punching in numbers or anything like that. I'm just kind of guessing where it should be. It's gonna be a very tiny fish in the end. Then again, I make it sick a bit and only just build the half, and there'd be like nothing on the other side for the like half. Fish. Is I'm just going to start dragging some of these over here and using them up because I can already see that that's not going to that's not going to work for me. I don't like the the way it's um, layered. Yeah, I spent a lot of time working on the that bit, and now I'm not even going to. For you know builders, that's just part of. Part of the deal. Not everything's gonna go exactly as expected or wanted. Okay, then the next one. That little bit at the bottom is bugging me. Starting to take a little shape, I think. 
slowly but surely. It's not one of those just kind of slap it together. I mean, I mentioned like making the whale out of this and a few items that you could probably use to represent that. And uh, it would probably be pretty quick to slap that together, but you know, I've got an entire month to work on this. So, well, three weeks at least. So I don't see the point in, you know, going too simple. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. It depends on the idea that I have in my head. And for this, the fish, you really have to go into the detail of the scales for me. Uh, I think that's a, an important part of a fish. And since I've decided to stick with some kind of a fish, even if it's not the diseased mutant of a angler fish, um, I'd like to try and keep some of those details. Again, the, the shape, I'm not keeping it 100% close to it because there's just no way that I'm going to be able to do that with how I'm setting the scales up. But the general idea uh, of how I want it to be shaped is, is uh, you know, as long as I'm kind of sticking to it, uh, I'll, I think it'll be all right. And if you notice, when I do the next draw, I always start off with the offsetted bit um, rather than starting at the top because um, it's easier to kind of see where it needs to be overlapped. If that, if that makes any sense. I start here and then I do the top one above and then my way down. It's gonna be a really fat fish. It's like probably gonna go way out here the way I'm going. But that's okay, fat fish is the rank. I don't know what kind of fish it is, just a general scaly fish. Not going in for a specific. I think it would be um, even more of a challenge if I tried to give it a specific um, type of fish, like I did with the angler one. I think that would just be crushing my spirit even more. Like if I tried to do a clownfish, then you know. Then I'd want to find objects that are orange and white, and we're pretty limited on those uh, particular colors. So, let's see, I'm going to move this over just a little bit. I feel like I'm covering the layer underneath a little too much. Don't want to keep shrinking it because then I just start, you know, making myself do more work. I don't really like eating fish. Uh, I'll eat fish sticks and um, that kind of thing, but just I think it's the whole, especially when it's like a, a whole fish and it's got like the head and the tail and everything's still there. And you know, you open it up and like start removing the meat off of the bones and stuff. That's like a big yuck for me because. Um, I don't know, whatever I'm eating, I feel like it shouldn't look like what it was before I decided to eat it. Um, like I wouldn't want a, a cow head on my plate just because I decided to eat hamburger or something. 
just, I don't know. I'm real quirky about those kind of things. Um, it's like my husband, he usually ends up handling all the meats when we're cooking with, you know, like if he's got to put a burger together or uh, spaghetti or whatever, he's the one that puts the meat in the pan because I can't stand touching it. Uh, the raw meat. Just really squeamish about it. He often jokes, what are you going to do when I go? And it's like, oh, hopefully I go before you do so I don't have to worry about it because I just don't like messing with it. I'm all the time, you know, freaking out when you like touch the package to the raw meat and then touch something else. I'm like, ah, oh, contamination, you know, and I'm screwing around because I just, uh, thinking about it kind of freaks me out because it's not like I'm a germaphobe or anything, but uh, for a raw meat, that really just freaks me out. Like we have cutting boards for our meats and for like our fruits and vegetables and stuff. And I have a particular um, section where the boards for the meats are used and the section for the boards for the vegetables are used so they don't use the same one for both because that would freak me out as well. Um, I don't know, it's just some of my quirks. See, doesn't that look a lot better than, than this? I think that's a lot better laid out as far as um, the layering of the scales. It's just a lot more time consuming and a lot more pieces will be required to fill it in, especially for the size that I've decided to go with. I'm just going to throw in a, a What will probably eventually happen is I'll just remove the um, Google uh, before I put in the last piece of scales and then um, it'll essentially be a hollow fish. But uh, yeah, I think that looks far better than it did. It's just going to take a lot of time to put in every single little piece. And I haven't even considered what I'm going to do for like the mouth or, or anything. I'm just, just going with the, the rhythm of putting together the, the scales and I guess praying that as I get to that other parts, uh, it'll come to me. <laughs> it may or may not, I don't know. This is one of those things. Um, I'll have to figure it out as we go. But you can see what I meant about, um, well, if I can move my camera better, the distance, how it's slowly pulling out away from the, the actual body of the, the Google. And that's just because of how I'm, I'm layering them. All right, Samson, I'll see you later. Thanks for dropping by, and I uh, hope to see you again soon. Oh, I didn't realize the hour. I'm not sure even how long I've been at this. I forgot to look at what time it was. But I figure it's 11 now, so I can probably hold out until um, lunchtime. grab myself something to eat. That way, and a little bit this way. And just, just there. That looks okay. And we'll do the same with the rest.
Yeah, I was hoping to see the new um, anniversary items today in the mailbox, but apparently when they went live uh, at midnight, I assume, they just kind of broke everything. From what I read on the forms, it was like, um, first it was like a reset or restart, and then that didn't fix it, so they had to do an emergency maintenance. And so currently the um, anniversary event kind of stuff is is uh, disabled at the moment, which is disappointing, but you know, that's the way it goes sometimes when you introduce a new thing. I'm sure when the holiday events come, we'll probably see similar issues pop up because as far as I know, they haven't um, put out any of that on the ETR before. And I'm sure part of that is, you know, to keep it a surprise. But when you do stuff like that, then you run into the fact that um, there will be issues that arise that you might not have either anticipated or um, just didn't come into effect until there's a bunch of people trying to, you know, deal with it. And that can be um, problematic for events like that. When you flip the switch, then it's like, it's kind of blows up. But, you know, that's not just Wildstar that that happens with. Um, WoW has, sim has had similar issues. Um, and I'm sure other games have as well. If something doesn't quite go according to plan and they have to, you know, do adjustments on the fly. But if it means new content, new stuff coming out, hey, I'm all for it. I don't, I don't mind the little bumps in the road from time to time. Sure, our lives would be much easier if we didn't have the bumps, but, you know, what game doesn't have bumps? Yeah, I think that looks way, way better than it was. Again, it's going to take a gargantuan amount of plates, but all for the sake of nice scaly detail. Worth it, right? Worth it. Keep telling yourself it's worth it. Okay, so that's one more row down. Just looking at it. Not exactly smooth, but close enough. Or I'm happy with it. I don't know, my stomach's really starting to brow. I talked, mentioned food to myself, and now my stomach's starting to all for some attention, so I, I may not be able to hold out a full hour again. You have to drop it at half an hour. When the stomach says it needs something, uh, can't just ignore it. I mean, you can, but you're liable to pay for it. It, it won't forget that you forgot it. Ugh, I have to... myself on top of some so I can put a little better angle on what I'm putting together here. Ah. Wrong thing, wrong thing. Okay, so still going with the fish scales. Looking pretty good. 
gonna have to um, decide how, you know, is that the limit of the rows probably up to this point and just kind of scale it off that way. You know, eventually you're gonna have to start curving it to finish going around the body. You can't just keep making rows after rows and making them longer and longer every time. Gotta, gotta end somewhere. Don't know where, but um, it's, uh, this is kind of the midpoint, I guess. So you need to have them, you know, lined up that way. So I may do a, like a line of scales this way, and like three rows, and that would cover the the gap between the two sides, maybe, and have to do the same on the bottom. Something like that. And of course, it won't be bringing all the way to the front because usually the front of the fish is uh, not scaled as like where the the mouth and, and I don't know the, the front part of the face is. It's typically like rounded, so probably like right about here on down. So it'll be just like from here back um, that the scales take up. So let's buy another batch of plates, I guess. I'll count these up later when I'm uh, done with the build and see just how many of these Freddy plates I use, but which again, I think it's an interesting aspect of uh, this particular challenge. Like uh, in some of the other builds, people have like put stuff together and then they list banana in the in the items used, and I'm thinking, what part of that was the banana? You know, and other times it's you know obvious what the banana was used for, but some of them was like, where where was the banana? But you never know. Uh, it's just fun, like a like a trivia kind of thing. Something you want to know. You know, it's great to see people put together stuff and have them, you know, either so show a screenshot or whatever. Then more often than not, there's always someone that goes, "Well, what did you use for that? Or what what is that item?" So for this particular challenge, I always um, list what I use. That's one of the reasons why there's absolutely nothing else on the plot other than what I'm working on. Because then it makes it easier to uh, just go through the placed items list and count it out. But yeah, if this inspires other guilds um, to do similar little events for their, um, their members, that would be cool. Uh, this is something I'm, I I do uh, these types of uh, little events or challenges or whatever you want to call them. Um, I've done this uh, since, well, several months now. There's some other things that I do too, but um, for this particular one, I think we've had it up for about three or four months. And I expect to keep keep it going for the you know future months. Now it's like I said, there's no like prizes or anything other than uh, being able to say yeah I won the boat. I think the prize is being able to say look what I built and I'll be able to show it off and say yeah I did it. something new and interesting and, and unique. There certainly won't be anybody else that's made this ugly fish of mine.
I imagine there will be a few that probably uh, work on like some kind of like an octopus. I, I figure a lobster would probably be pretty fun using different things to make the pinchers and, and, and things like that. There's a lot of um, different little marine life that would uh, probably translate pretty good in a lot of the items that we have available. It's like we have a lot of the uh, strange stuff that's got wiggly bits and, and things that kind of look uh, like an octopus or squid or something. Yeah, my stomach's really talking. I don't know if it's coming through on the stream, but it sure is loud to my ear. Now, inevitably, I have these plates over here, and I'll probably, you know, miss a few. And there'll be some stray plates sitting out there. I had that happen um, on my main house. I was working on the parasols for the, the snack bar, and I finished it up. And then the next day, I went back and found a couple of plates laying on the ground that I had missed or whatever. And uh, he's like, what is that? Stray stuff. Okay, one more for that row, and I think we'll be ready to go on to the next. Yep, I'm hungry. And my carrot is constantly floating. As you see that he just kind of flew right down to the ground. Okay, so... I'm going to start another row of my scales. No. Now, I'm not going to do uh, the top and the bottom ones. I'm just going to go across the middle here, I think. Um, no, I probably just... What I'll probably do is aim for it to even up with this, I guess. So I'll just keep adding. And then all I'll have to do is fill in the gap here um, with an extra row. Maybe that'll work. We'll see. I'm just getting kind of um, worried that I'm building this side and it's not going to meet up correct with the other side. Plus the fact that it, once I build the other side, it's not like I can just copy a whole section and say paste and, and make it look exactly the same shape and everything. So we'll see how that um, plays out. Like I said, I may end up just cheating and do a fish on the board, like a fish on a mounted wall or something. Leave it at that so I only have to do the one side. Wouldn't that be awful? Now, even though I'm working on this particular project today, doesn't mean I've stopped working on the uh, golf course and subway. I am still actively uh, collecting and crafting uh, parts for that build. I have come across a good many of the um, XL chairs that I, I need for the diner there. Um, I haven't put them in because, again, I'm trying to save as much of that for live streaming as possible. But um, 
just because I'm working on this today doesn't mean that that's you know, done or anything. Still plenty to, to work on. I have been looking at some pictures of like control rooms for subways and stuff to kind of get a better idea of how busy looking and, and how they're set up. And uh, just to get a better idea of what I might want to do in my own control room uh, area. Same with the maintenance room. Uh, so while I'm not actively building on that um, today, uh, it is in the back of my head uh, and always um, something uh, I've got uh, in mind as far as what else I need to do there. Because um, I really feel like there's still a lot to be done, um, a lot of details I could be adding in that um, I just haven't gotten around. But um, like I've said in the past, it's nice to just take a break from that uh, from time to time. Because uh, then you kind of come back with fresher eyes. You know, if you've been staring at the same project for, for days on end, you kind of start getting, um, I don't know, a little uh, glazed over and you start feeling like you're getting, uh, you're bumping up against the wall, you can't quite figure out what else you might can do or how you can do it. Or you're just out of decor and you need to spend some time uh, farming that up or whatever. Whatever the case may be, it's always good to take a break. Um, never a bad thing. Um, unless you just absolutely leave it and never come back to it. That would be bad, but that's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about a, a nice little break to get your mind on other things and then come back to your main project later. Um, I always find that helpful. And this little uh, challenge is a great, a great excuse to, to step aside for a little bit on the other project and have fun with this and try to have fun and pretend I'm having fun, <laughs> whatever. Okay, Mr. Fishy is coming along nicely. Let's see. I guess we need one up here. Again, I'm kind of just I'm hoping this will lead straight to that one and, and it just it looks like I actually did it on purpose. As if I planned it that way all along. When I really didn't, it's just kind of working out that way. But you can see how there's like gaps and stuff. People come and really take a good close look at it. They're going to see that it's not perfect or anything, but you know. I want it to be recognizable as a fish. That's I think um, a good uh, way to put it. I mean, if people look at this and they're like, what in the world is that? Then yeah, there that, that might be a, a problem. You don't want folks clueless about what it is that you put together. That's a, a big hint right there that you know, something ain't quite right if they're struggling to figure out what it is you put together. It's like um, hidden doors. Uh, some people really like to hide them, and I've been guilty of that myself, where I would think, well, surely they'll find this if they're looking around. But a lot of people really want to be like handheld kind of um, 
So I know a lot of builders that when they put in like a, a secret passage or something, they'll mark it in some way so that it draws your attention. It doesn't outright tell you, hey, there's a, a door here, but it gives you an inclination that there might be something there. And for the, uh, the players that are a little bit more exploration inclined, they will, um, they will uh, be rewarded with that extra paying attention by discovering that there actually is something unique there, be it a, a doorway or a hallway or something, some extra little thing that, you know, most people wouldn't pick up. I feel like I'm not really curving that right, but I kinda hope that it's okay. Again, I'm looking on how far the overlap is. I don't want to start making it too small because then that just means more rows. And while I love doing these scales, um, it can be um, monotonous. I guess this is where um, the people suggesting about putting in a duplicate kind of feature would be handy. You know, where it would automatically charge you for the, the plate, but you could just say copy duplicate and just put it all down without me having to click everything and as rather just to get it on there. I'm sure. Oh, see, it's still kind of curving along it's the, the shape here because you know I have to not only curve it this way, but I've got to make sure it's still following along this way as well. If it starts, you know, getting too far out of it, then um, you just kind of lose the shape of the fish. And I don't want it to be like just a round ball. I still want it to have that tapered look. Um, I think will be better uh, representing if I turn this a little bit more. You just I give it some extra shape. I may do all of this work and decide I don't like it after all. It'll be disappointing, but it's a possibility. It's very time consuming. You know, for what you think is a simple build, fish, turns out to be something, you know, like a gargantuan project. In addition to being hungry, I'm very sleepy all of a sudden. I'm like, I know I got a pretty good night's sleep, which is kind of out of the norm. Usually I toss and turn a lot. In fact, my average sleep time is about between four and six hours, which I know is probably not a good thing, but that's just the way I've always been. But, um,. I got way more than that last night. Maybe that's the problem. I got too much sleep. I don't know. Just, I feel kind of groggy. Like I haven't fully woke up from this morning. And that's another thing. I usually get up pretty early. Uh, usually about 6.30 every morning. My husband gets up about 6, but he lets me see I'm talking about sleep and I'm yawning. Um, he lets me sleep in to about 6.30 because that's when he heads off to work. And then I'm usually 
waddling around around them because um, I always like to make sure that our son gets off to school on time. Which, you know, he's old enough to take care of that himself, but I still, as a mom, I still feel inclined to, you know, just double check and make sure that he did get up. And he did have some breakfast or something, whatever. Again, it's not like accurate um, eyeballing this a whole lot. Trying to get the shape and, and the placement of the scales the way I want. Like right here, this little off. And you know, as as I put it together, maybe um, I'll have to do adjustments here and there just to get the both sides to meet up and have the center look like it's supposed to, and all of that. But you now, as we get to that, we'll come to a decision about it. For now, though, I think that's all we're going to work on today. Um, it was mostly just kind of an introduction as to what exactly the CBDC is. Um, which is just essentially a monthly kind of challenge build project thing that I, I do for my guild every month. And I, you know, just set it up as a, a way to encourage them to think outside the box with items. You know, that the plate just isn't a plate anymore. It can be so much more than that. Um, and so far, most of my guildmates have taken to the challenge uh, pretty vigorously there very enthusiastic and, and uh, creative, uh, by far very much creative. Um, they're always impressing me with um, their ideas and, and uh, how they execute them. And uh, I find it interesting just to see how other people uh, approach uh, little projects like this. So um, I will probably pick this up again tomorrow um, just to kind of keep going with the break. Again, I won't be really uh, working off camera on my main house. Um, I'll probably just work on uh, collecting more uh, furniture that I need, um, like the exile chairs and stuff when, I, when and where I can, and kind of researching a little better about where I want to go with the control room and the maintenance room. Because those are the two main rooms that are left that really haven't taken a full shape. I mean, the control room has got a little bit but there's still a lot more that can be uh, better defined there. And I don't want to just have it look, you know, kind of like lazily put together. I want it to be just as detailed and interesting as the other parts that I've, I've uh, thrown, thrown together. Um, and of course, Wednesday uh, at 1 p.m. CET, I will be doing my usual uh, housing only uh, broadcast. Of course, most of my broadcasts are housing only, but you know, every now and then I'll throw in something else. But for sure, Wednesday is the day to be there if you're interested in housing tours. Um, while I have leveled up my Dominion character uh, to level 14 so that I now have access to the Dominion side of the housing uh, uh, homes, um, I haven't really had a chance to start setting up a list of homes that, you know, I find are uh, exceptional over on that side. So I probably won't do any kind of Dominion tours this week. I'm going to aim for possibly having some ready to go next week. And the thought is, if I'm going to do this right, um, is I'll maintain a list of Exile side and I'll maintain a list of Dominion side and I will alternate uh, each week um, starting probably next week, fingers crossed, um, where like this week I'll showcase a few Exile homes and the next week I'll showcase a few Dominion homes. Um, just to kind of um, uh, mix things up a bit 
and also to, you know, it's not like I'm uh, exiled, uh, a fanatic on that part where it just has to be only exile. I've been more than uh, excited about seeing what the players on the Dominion side of the, of the fence have been putting together. And up to this point, the only way I got to see and enjoy those builds is through either them sharing their videos or uh, screenshots and things like that. So it's going to be nice to be able to see them up close and in person. And uh, it will be a, an extra joy for me to uh, showcase that to other Exile players that may not have taken the time to level up a Dominion and would still like to see those. And this will be a way for them to do that as well. So that is the general plan uh, of that. Um, for the rest of the week, um, probably we'll be doing a lot of uh, working on this special side project. Um, I may do a little bit of the, the um, subway station uh, on the stream, but I'm not going to uh, specifically do that on any particular day. Uh, so again, it's kind of, come and go with me it just depends on you know what I'm interested in for that day and today seemed like a good day since today's the first of the month and it's the new challenge it seemed like a good time to get started on uh, working on putting something together for that so in the meantime I hope everyone has a great week um, if you get the chance to uh, stop by during one of my streams please be welcome to say hi ask questions um, throw out your suggestions, whatever uh, hits your mood. Um, again, my hours through the week are hit and miss as far as when I stream, but I always streaming every weekday, um, at least for an hour or two. And uh, if you want to know for sure when I'm up, just follow the channel and you'll get notified when I go online. Um, but I think that's it for today. Um, have a great day. Uh, happy anniversary to uh, all the Wild Star players that have been with us uh, through thick and thin, and even those that are just not joining us. Um, you'll still get to take part in the the anniversary events once they turn it back on, of course. But I believe it's for the entire month of June, um, the special anniversary items will be available. So be sure and log in if you haven't. and. Uh, Get your friends to do so and that way they get their nice little nifty items including a cupcake decor which i'm very much looking forward to seeing how it looks and, and uh, what i might can do with it besides just using it as a cupcake anyway um until then uh, happy housing and uh, see you guys later bye